Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. I was uh, going to do a video a couple of weeks ago um, about a little issue I had with the ICOM 705. I've had it since it was new, and it was an annoyance, not really a major deal, just really annoying. Uh, but then, a couple of weeks ago, I discovered that ICOM had a new firmware update out, version 1.2, and I went ahead and installed it, and it fixed my problem before I had a chance to talk about it. But I thought I'd talk about it anyway, because it's an interesting story. So I got the 705 back before Christmas, way back in November. And uh, I really love the little radio. Absolutely adore it. Uh, I use it all the time. In fact, it's pretty much my primary radio now in the RV. I, I, have had, I haven't turned my 7300 on but a couple of times in the past three months. Um... But when I first got it, actually the second day that I had it, I had an issue. Uh, I went to shut it off, and this power off screen that comes up hung. It just sat there. There's little dots at the end of the powering off or power off that, that would animate, you know. Um, so I knew the CPU was running, but it wouldn't shut down. I waited 10 minutes one time, and it didn't shut down. The only way I could get it to power off was to pull the battery and unhook the power. Then you hook the power back up, and strangely, uh, that it would turn back on. It resumes the state that it was in. So if the power's off when you pull the power and you plug it back in, it stays off. If the power's on and you pull the power and you plug it back in, it turns back on. ICOM says that that's by design. Seems like an odd choice to me. If you had an intermittent power cord, um, you'd end up with your radio going on and off and on and off and possibly getting damaged. I don't know. That's beside the point. So this power off hang was inconsistent. I could not find any set of circumstances that would reliably reproduce it. Uh, I tried it without an SD card, with an SD card installed, without a USB connection, with a USB connection active, different modes, different bands, it wouldn't matter. At some point, and it might be fine for a couple of days and 20 power cycles, uh, or it might happen twice in a row. Um, it would hang on power off. You'd hit the power button. Let me show you. So that's the normal behavior. You hit the power button, the uh, little powering off message appears, and then it goes down. Uh, with mine, it would sometimes power down within a half a second, sometimes in two or three seconds. It was inconsistent, and then sometimes it just wouldn't power off at all. So, what I had done back then in, in researching this problem is I wanted more data. Are other people experiencing this? So, I went to the ICOM 705 users group on Facebook and I posted about this issue. As much detail as I could put up there. Everything that I had tried. Um, and, uh, of course, I had a series of comments from people that didn't read the post, you know, and said, gee, have you tried it with the SD card? Do you have a bad SD card? And it's like they, they ignored that I'd written that I'd tried it with and without the SD card. I had also, um, to, to be as thorough as possible, I had completely reset the radio, did a factory reset, did not put an SD card in, did not hook up USB, did not change any settings on the radio. I just used it for a couple of days in a raw, out-of-the-box uh, factory reset form, and the power hang handle happened twice in those two days. So um, I pretty much had it down to firmware. Uh, that Facebook post, by the way, I did hear from at least five other people that had exactly the same problem. And that's a fairly small sampling. There's just a, a couple of thousand members on that page, maybe three or four thousand, I don't know. Not, not a lot, really, when you think about the world market. And in that small sample set, I had five people that had the same problem. So I was pretty sure at that point that it was a firmware issue. And I contacted ICOM. I went through their normal pro process of, of creating a ticket with tech support. Um, but I also emailed Ray, Ray Novak. He's the sales manager here in the U.S. And uh, I've met him and we've, we have a, a little bit of a dialogue. So um, <clears throat> I worked through him as well. 
and he let me know that his tech support guys were unable to duplicate the problem. Um, if I found any kind of a reliable way of making it happen to let them know. Uh, what I heard back from ICOM tech support was similar. Um, we cannot duplicate this issue, therefore there's really nothing we can do about it. So I was thinking about making a video. Um, I was going to make a video about the problem, um, show it, show the, the hung power off screen, talk about all the things that I tried, and ask for anybody watching the video that's having the same problem, precisely the same problem, to let me know. Uh, and then I was going to build a list, you know, and forward that on to ICOMS Engineering and say, hey, look, here's 30 or 40 or however many people that are reporting the same issue. You know, it's, it's obviously got to be a firmware bug. <clears throat> I knew it was not my hardware since I'd heard from five other people, right? Well, so I was getting ready to make that video, and I just on a whim, I went to ICOMS page and saw, there it is, 1.2 was released at the end of January. Okay, well, I'll install that. It fixed the problem. Apparently, even though ICOM officially told me we can't duplicate the problem, so there's nothing we can do, it must have sat in their consciousness or perhaps some engineer read some internal email about this issue that somebody had reported or whatever and found the problem and fixed it. Because now, um, well, it's been two weeks. I've been using the radio, lots of power cycles, no issues. There's other things you get with the 1.2 firmware update. The nice thing about having a software-defined radio is the radio's features are defined by software, so they can add new things to the radio just by updating the software, and they have done that in this case. Uh, let's go take a look at what they talk about and what they've added, and I'll show you uh, one particular feature they added that helps me out a lot when I'm shortwave listening. One of my uh, fun things that I do occasionally with the 705 is shortwave listening. I love it as a little shortwave listening radio. It's, uh, it's nice having the band scope. It's nice being able to see stations as you're scrolling along here. There's 20 meters. <laughs> let's go down here. Uh, let's go down here to uh, another popular shortwave area. Here we go. So you can see the AM stations. Really nice. Um, it makes hunting signals real nice and quick when you're shortwave listening. Um, however, that scope is uh, somewhat limited. What if you want to look at a larger swath or... Um, well, one nice thing with... Let's go, to, let's go to like the 20 meter band, okay? Okay, right now I'm looking at 200 kilohertz either side. And that gives me a good swath of the band, but I can actually look at the whole band by hitting the center fix button. And there's the entire 20 meter band from 14 to 14.35. Pretty cool. The little green line here indicates where I am tuned to. So you can see that moving while I'm tuning. Well, what if I want to do that when I'm in short wave? Let's go back to general coverage. Um, there you go. Yeah, okay. So here I'm looking at just this span, right? What if I want to see a bigger swath and I want to do that, that band scope view? If I tap that, oh, scope out of range. What's going on there? Well, the uh, fixed band um, setting has band edges programmed in, so you can't really see the whole thing. But if I hold this in, it goes to scroll mode. And now, I'm looking at, well, let's see, 11.7 um, to 12.2, so a really good chunk of the band. And if I tune, you can see the green line moving. Watch what happens when I reach the end. Instead of saying scope out of range, it scrolls to the next chunk. And I can tune across that chunk, and it scrolls to the next chunk. So that is really nice for shortwave listening. Say. So that's one of the features that they added to uh, the new firmware. We'll go over to ICOM's uh, site and we'll take a look at the other features that they've added to it. Okay, well here we are on ICOM Japan's uh, firmware site for the IC705. I will put a link to this in the video description if you want to download it yourself. 
So we scroll down here and we can see the current versions of all the software that's available for it. And if we go here to firmware, we see that version 1.20 was released on January 22nd. I'll click on that. Okay, major changes. See, they only list major changes. Um, the scroll mode I talked about uh, in the uh, little clip you just saw. That's pretty cool. Uh, Pop-up screen that displays when span or edge change is added. Uh, so that would be the span or the band edge changes. And uh, the number of fixed edge memories is expanded to four. So yeah, we got some stuff there. Preset functions. Um, they have defined preset functions now where you can go in and have um, all of the little things that you change when you're changing into a different mode, like for this example for FT8. Um, you can have those all set up, so you just have a one button thing where I press one button, it goes to USB data mode with the filters that I've have set and, and everything else. So presets is kind of nice, and they've added one in here for, specifically for FT8. So you can do a one button press to put the radio into a mode that's appropriate for um, FT8. Uh, they've added support for the AH705 automatic tuner. Um, other changes. Uh, WLAN access point mode is added. I'll have to look into that one. Uh, front key customization functions. Uh, so you can change the function of a couple of buttons, which is kind of nice. Um, and so on. You know, you can read through this yourself. There's a few, there's a few additions in here. So, there you go. Um, it's kind of neat that they can they can add features to a radio now with just updating the software. So there you go. Uh, the new firmware gives you a few features and it uh, fixes that hang on power off problem. Um, I also had heard from a couple of people on the Facebook post and other, other forums that they would occasionally have a hang during operation where the whole radio would just freeze. I had that happen once uh, back in December. But it only, only, only ever happened to me that once, and so I just didn't really think about that that much. But who knows? Maybe that's fixed as well. I'll bet you they tightened up a few things, perhaps optimized some code. You know, these firmware updates, uh, sometimes they fix a lot of little things they don't tell you about. And this is definitely one of the cases where they did that. So I hope you found that interesting and useful. Or maybe, you know, useful if you have a 705. If you do have a 705 and you're on the fence about upgrading the new, to the new firmware... Um, I have seen no issues with it. It's The radio's been fine. It's been a little bit better, obviously. So uh, go ahead and upgrade your... You're, you're good with firmware 1.2. And uh, by the way, when you do the firmware upgrade, it will prompt you to back up your, your settings. And then after the firmware upgrade, you can then go and, and back to the SD card menu and restore your previous settings. And it restores everything, all your memories, all your... Um, all the little things you've tweaked and tuned and all that all come back. So it's an easy and painless process to do. You simply copy the firmware file to the SD card in the folder that they tell you to and uh, select it as an update from the uh, SD card menu. It's really straightforward, super easy to do. So uh, anyway, go ahead and do it. If you have a 705, go to firmware 1.2, it's fine. And it might even fix a problem that you have that's annoyed you that you haven't uh, mentioned to anybody. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.